Good day, everyone. I am presenting a research titled Remote Teaching, Learning, and Students' Academic Life, COVID-19 Pandemic Context. I am Marites A. Valot, and with me are Dr. Nyset N. Ganal and Professor Vivian R. Mauricio. We are the Faculty of Teacher Development from Philippine Normal University, North Luzon, Philippines. The COVID-19 pandemic is said to be a global health crisis that brought about many changes. This has affected teaching and learning since there was a shift to online or remote teaching and learning. This particular remote teaching and learning has advantages and disadvantages. And it uses varied strategies as well, according to Salvarads et al. 2021 and Hamid et al. 2020. The research gap that this particular research wanted to find out would be the descriptions of remote teaching learning in the Philippine context, specifically in a rural setting. For the statement of the problem, we have the following. Number one, what is the participant's perception on remote teaching and learning during COVID-19 pandemic? What is the participant's level of achievement and attitude using remote teaching and learning? Is there a significant relationship between the student's level of achievement and attitude using remote teaching and learning? Is there a significant difference in the level of achievement and attitude among the participants when grouped according to age, gender, year, and program? Fifth, what are the common issues and challenges the participants experienced during remote teaching and learning? Number six, what did they learn from remote teaching and learning? And the seven, what recommendations would the participants offer to help improve remote teaching and learning? For the research paradigm, we have the following variables. For the independent variables, we have remote teaching and learning. The dependent variables are the academic life of students, including the achievement and attitude. And the moderating variables are age, year, gender, and program. This study made use of descriptive correlational method of research. According to Creswell, he states that the purpose of the descriptive correlational method is to find out the relationship between two or more variables. In this study, the achievement of the students was indicated by their second term weighted average, school year 2020, 2021, and the participants were categorized by age, gender, year level, and course program to see whether there was a significant difference in their level of performance and attitude. The participants of the study were the 318 PNU1 freshmen to junior students of the term to academic year 2020-2021. The participants were 18 years old and above who consented to participate in the research. They were chosen using the convenience non-random sampling. The sampling was also um, also adapted the use of the KMO, which is actually the uh, kaiser mayer olkin measure of sampling. Uh, and uh, it is computed to have uh, a value. The adequacy of sampling was calculated with a value of um, 0.72, which is over the permissible limit of 0.50. Okay, the, the instrument of the study 
um, subject were subjected to content validation, pilot testing, and reliability testing. So the researchers created the data collection questionnaire. The items were gender neutral, gen generic in scope, and free of bias. The first selection of the instrument focused on the respondent's opinion on how remote teaching and learning should be delivered. And the instrument's second section inquired about the respondent's views on remote teaching and learning. The instruments also gathered the respondent's problems and challenges, as well as their learning experiences with remote teaching and learning. So to establish the internal consistency of the items, the instruments were submitted to content validation and reliability testing using the Cronbach Alpha. At least 100 students from who were not participants in the study but were part of the population were given the instrument. So depending on the findings of the validation, adjustments were made as needed and the performance participants, participants' performance during term two is measured by their general weighted average. The items in the instrument were exposed to content and face validity by five ed university educators from other institutions with experience and expertise in research writing and revisions in the original items were made based on their feedback. So the exploratory factor analysis Cronbach alpha coefficient and correlation analysis were also used to confirm the instrument's reliability, consistency, and the inter-item correlation. The researchers' data gathering procedure were the questionnaire and the interview. And under the questionnaire, uh, it contains the open-ended and the checklist method. The, the, the data were also gathered using the interview. In, in the interview method, it is in a form of using the messenger or through phone call. And also, uh, on the other hand, the registration method was also employed because the grades of the students were taken from the registrar. A data analysis, in the data analysis, uh, there were um, tools that were, that were used such as the descriptive as well as the inferential statistics. So the, under the descriptive statistics, the data were analyzed using the frequency and percentage on the profile of the students. And uh, the weighted mean is also employed uh, in determining the, the, the value of the different scales uh, used in the study. The ANOVA uh, analysis of variance, T-test, and Pearson R were also used to determine if there is a significant relationship and significant differences among the, really the, the variables that were being studied. So the association between the teaching, learning, and the academic lives of the participants was determined using Pearson product correlation and one-way analysis of variance and t-test for independent sample were done to see if there was a significant difference in their level of performance and attitude. Table 7 reveals that respondents have varied learning experiences. Due to the modality utilized, the respondents have had tough experiences on poor internet connection, hostile learning environment, lack of study time, and personal psychological experiences such as stress, shyness, sadness, coping skills, and saturation. Volunteering in group work, managing and balancing time, being independent, observant with different platforms to avoid being left behind and responsible, and compromising with the teacher and exploring applications 
and other media for learning are the students' ways of coping with the challenges of learning. Table 8 presents the respondents' recommendations to improve further remote teaching and learning. The recommendations relate to teacher activity and online material. Respondents emphasize that teachers should exercise flexibility and courtesy, increase instructional time, hold students' attention, strictly execute the syllabus, use other technology and coordinate delivery of tasks among themselves. The recommendations also include internet connectivity, recorded online classes, platform for delivering learning materials, technology, learning modalities, and learning materials. Conclusions. Respondents are predominantly females below 21 years of age and mostly enrolled in education courses. They find remote instruction effective and beneficial. Respondents' performance and attitudes are very good and unfavorable, respectively. There is no significant relationship between achievements and attitude in terms of trust in remote teaching and learning. Motivation and enjoyment influence performance and attitude. Respondents exhibit the same degree of achievement. The respondents' attitude on remote teaching and learning when grouped by age and gender are comparable, but when grouped by year, their sentiments differ. Remote teaching and learning positively impact achievement, but negatively impact students' attitude on a specific learning platform. Recommendations. Faculty members should know and understand the students' concerns in remote learning and handle them efficiently and effectively. Quality must prevail quantity on activities, tasks, and resources be utilized efficiently. Institutions may implement interventions to help students manage their emotions to promote good learning environment. The present study is limited on population, context, and variables. It may be replicated to pre-service education students in rural, urban and urban settings in Southeast Asian areas in a post-pandemic setting to compare results. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.